We picked the most overrated chairs from every price point, switching it up a little bit, going with three picks instead of one pick. Myself, Greg, and Robert are each going to make a pick for what we feel is the most overrated chair in each category. Starting it off, 300 bucks. All right, Robert, what do you have? Over 11,000 reviews, four and a half stars. You would expect a pretty nice chair, but I just described the Staples Hiking. So to me, the Hiking is too overrated. I, I just don't think it's a 4.5 star chair. It has pretty poor materials. It's just uncomfortable. You're, you sink into the seat. Your legs hit the front of the edge. To me, I would find a Tacova on Amazon. I would buy the Clatina Millette. Both very similar price range, but much better chairs. The Hiken to me is just a chair I would skip. Yeah, can't really disagree with anything said there. My pick is going to be the Flexi Spot Soutine. For $269.99, super uncomfortable chair. The back is almost unusable due to the pronounced lumbar support system. FlexiSpot has this thing rated basically as a five-star chair out of 171 reviews. They don't have a single three, two, or one-star review on this chair. Having worked with FlexiSpot in the past and not working with them now for their marketing tactics, their astroturfing and stuff like that, I very, very much question the validity of these reviews. It's not a good chair. Amazon users have this towards a 3.8 out of 5 stars. I could maybe get on board with that, but for me, this would be a do not buy chair. Very, very overrated. Those are a couple of really good overrated picks. I'm going with the See Who ergonomic mm. chair and it's got over 10,000 reviews on Amazon over a, I think it's like a 4.2 out of 5 it's incredible to me because if you've ever sat in the chair it's like a brick when you sit in it I mean it hurts when you sit down hard on the chair the arm pads are super uncomfortable and I definitely question that many positive reviews on a chair that's this uncomfortable so that's my pick all right $500 Ryan what do you have I went with the Autonomous Ergo Chair Pro, uh, just because I don't like really anything about this chair. The armrests are hard, really uncomfortable, too wide for me. I don't like the convex shape. The seat bottoms out within like 20 minutes, and I also don't think that it has very good back support. My favorite thing on the chair is probably the headrest, but it does tend to kind of pull on your hair a little bit. So there's just really nothing I like about this chair, but it has phenomenal reviews on Atonis' website, which isn't shocking. 4.7 out of 5 with almost 1,900 reviews. You're not going to find very many one, two, or three-star reviews on this chair either. So, again, I question them. Yeah, I mean, I've got the same pick here, and I have to wonder if Robert's going to be that same <laughs> pick as well. I mean, like he said, there's way too many positive reviews on this chair. This thing was pushed heavily through influencer marketing. I mean, it hit the scene, and it hit it fast and furious. It went out on every single YouTube channel. It didn't matter the size, and they were all glowing reviews. But maybe when the chair was $300 or around the $300 price point, I could see it not being overrated. Once you get in the five, five, fifty dollars range, you got a two-year warranty, a seat pad that's just not comfortable, something that pulls the hair out of your neck. I mean, I, I question the validity of those reviews as well, and I think at five fifty, dollars this thing is definitely overrated. Yeah, that would, actually was my pick until like <laughs> last night. I quick changed it up because I figured we'd all be the same. So I actually went with the IKEA chairs. So the, both the Marcus and the Jarfalet. Now they're actually, the Marcus is 270, uh, Jarfalet is 320. I mean, if you have to ship these chairs, we're talking $300. So then they're actually over this price range. If you have to go pick them up, it's going to cost some money. Almost all of our other chairs that we talk about have free shipping. So it kind of falls somewhere in that price range. To me, they're just not super comfortable chairs. They have a decent recline, but a lot of other problems. I don't like the materials. I don't, they just don't fit me well. High back, but really short seat. And personally, I know it's subjective, but I don't really love the look of the chairs. So to me, they're just kind of overrated. They get a little bit too much hype that I think they don't deserve. I think any chair that has a, it was a $300 shipping charge. Is that yeah, what you said? Free, that's if you're a member, you get $300 shipping. Like Otherwise, pretty, it's another 50 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. <laughs> Only $300 for shipping. That boosts it right into the, I think that's a, that's a pretty solid pick. They're making like a 500% margin on <laughs> that, shipping. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> what are All they right. Doing? At $700, I have the Secret Lab Nua, Nua, new chair. I just call it the new chair. Uh, this chair is interesting because it's one of those chairs. Why I think it's overrated is because everybody keeps asking us about this chair. Everyone wants to know about it. It's like the, it's the chair that Secret Lab has that sort of, 
squashes the issues that a lot of people have with a racer style gaming chair or that's what people perceive it to be and it is not even close and at seven hundred dollars with the headrest which is how i have to envision most of you would be setting this chair up you get not a great warranty you have to do their influencer program where you've got to promote this thing to get the full blown warranty the return policy isn't great on it and the chair just isn't very comfortable and oddly enough a lot of these chairs i think from secret lab are being used by heavier individuals because they are beefier chairs we see a lot of people saying i want that chair because it feels like it will hold my body better than these other office chairs this chair doesn't do any of that because if you're too wide you don't fit in the seat so I got to say, for $700, I just don't think there's a more overrated chair right now from a brand. I went with the same brand, just a different chair, the Titan Evo 2022. This thing's got 38,000 reviews. 91% of them are five-star. 91%. That is not realistic for a chair that's $500. That's not realistic for an Embody. If you go onto Herman Miller's website, they won't have a rating like that. So completely disingenuous rating in my opinion from secret lab site and again you're getting a chair with not great policies like greg already touched on and i don't think the titan is comfortable i do think it's the best of the racing brand but i could just never sit in a racing chair and i mean just due to the price and the overinflated ratings i just can't get on board with this i mean amazon has it as a 3.8 which i think is more that, accurate that's probably fair i mean i think just from the group in our office you can tell right away no one really wants to sit in that right. chair but they do understand what it is so all right, Robert, what do you have at 700 I went with the Herba Miller Aeron Classic with this, and the reason it's in that price range is because you can only get this used at this point. So I believe people are buying into the lore, the story of getting a Herman Miller Aeron, but they're thinking that they're going to get a remastered chair, which is just amazing. I mean, I'm sitting in it now for $1,500. This is not an overrated chair. I believe this is a good value. But for $700, $700 to get an Aeron Classic, I don't think it's actually valued at that. I don't think it's as comfortable. It's like, it's not like you're buying a, a one-year-old version of a product, and this is like now there's a V2. It's a total different chair than what the remastered is. So it's kind of overrated. People think they're getting a better chair than what they're going to actually get. I mean, if people don't see how fair we are with these overrating things, I mean, we have one, one of our three chairs that we refurbished as an Aeron Classic yeah. chair, and Robert just, Robert just hit it with the, the overrated. Chair that we sell. So, and I don't disagree <laughs> with what he's saying it's when true. comparing it to the remaster, but it's just it's funny. So, yeah, and it's not it's not even that like I hate the chair. It's just that it's like it's overrated for that price. I think it's a little overrated. I think there's there just other chairs I'd rather have. All right, $1,000, Robert, you're going again. What do you have? So this might not be a surprise. The X-Chair X2. This is one of the biggest, talk about hype, hyped up chairs. You see it in commercials. I watch a lot of football. You're going to see commercials for this all the time. And it's just not a great chair. It's, what, 970 I believe. For me, this is like feels like a $300 chair. It just, to me, it's very uncomfortable. It has a couple nice points that the arms aren't terrible, but yet they're really wobbly. This chair gets way too much hype. It's just not deserved. I don't think it's comfortable. I definitely don't think it's worth that $970 price tag. Yeah, I can agree with that. Mine is going to be the All 33, though. And I personally think that the All 33 is the most overrated chair in the entire market. This is a $999 chair that has one of the lowest build qualities I've seen on any of the chairs that come through our office. Very low quality, and it is super, super uncomfortable. I could not sit in this thing for an hour and like it. It's also got a terrible warranty, five-year warranty with one-year coverage on the foam and fabric. It's got a bad return policy, $99 restocking fee. For the amount of hype that this chair gets, being backed by all sorts of chiropractors and the whole story, I don't buy it, and I also don't believe their reviews on their site. I think they're overinflated with a 4.8 star rating. I don't think it's a fair rating for what you're getting. It's just the most overrated chair I've ever seen. And if I can jump in there too, for, for these same price ranges of both the X chair and the All 33 chair, you can get such a nice chair for that same price range. That's what makes these seem yeah. really overrated. Like you could get a Zodi for about the same price. You could get a Mira 2 that are just going to be much nicer chairs that maybe don't get as much love. Yeah, I would say there's probably not a more overhyped chair than the All-33. Maybe the X chair, it's kind of back and forth for me. But like Ryan said, I mean, the claims that they have on this chair, they've got things. So there's 33 reasons to switch to an All-33 chair, and just a few of them. Now there's 33. Lowers your stress levels, boosts productivity, burns more calories, keeps you mobile as you age and the list literally goes on with no actual medical documentation to back up 
any of these claims. So what do you get for $1,000? Well, I guess you get a chair with a five-year warranty, a 10% restocking fee, and a ton of hype, basically. I would have a hard time going through our entire office right now and finding a chair that I wouldn't rather sit in than the all 33. And this includes our $99 Target chairs. There's almost no chair in this office I wouldn't rather sit in than that chair. And it's a thousand bucks. So no budget. So I don't think this is going to come as a surprise, but I'm picking the X chair and it's like the X chair brand. So we have the K2 Sport, the management chair here, which is about a thousand dollars. And this is again, one of those brands. I think the only reason I put this kind of above the all 33 chair is because they do have prices that go beyond that and it's everywhere. And the issue I have with it is that the chairs are so close in price to Steelcase, Hayworth, Herman Miller, that the warranty and the return policies are so poor. We're talking, when you push a you know risk-free 30-day return, but it, it costs $150, and you go to Hayworth, Herman Miller, and Steelcase and buy all of their chairs and return them all for free, no charge, it, it's tough for me to say that's not overhyping, overrated. Same thing with the warranty. They push a 15-year warranty, which at the, on surface level looks fantastic. But if you go in the details right away, it's two years that they actually cover all of the thing, bumper to bumper. After that, you're paying for shipping. And then beyond that, it's kind of picking and choosing what they're covering. So I, I just think if they would fix those policies, I wouldn't put them on this list where I have them, but they haven't. And so for that reason, it's my no budget pick. I've got kind of an ex obscure pick here. I've got the Technion Contessa is my pick. And the reason that I'm picking this chair is because Technion is often regarded as a really high-end brand, up there with Herman Miller, Steelcase, Hayworth. I don't feel that that's the case, and I think the Contessa is a perfect example. I don't believe that this is a high-end chair from a build quality standpoint. It's very similar to the Secret Lab Noya chair, but you're gonna be paying $1,035 for it. They're only gonna give you a three-year warranty on the mechanism and the moving parts, two-year warranty on the fabric. You also cannot return the chair without a 20% restocking fee. So just piggybacking off of what Greg just said, this is the same thing. We have a high-end brand that wants to compete with the actual high-end flagship brands, and they've got policies that don't come close and a build quality that can't match any of them. And so for me, just due to how uncomfortable the chair is overall and the policies that you're getting, this to me is a very, very overrated and overinflated chair. If you look at a lot of best office chair lists online, the number one chair on a lot of these lists is going to be the gesture. And to me, I don't think that this should be the number one chair. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually really like the gesture, but to me, there's just better options for that same price range. And I don't think it's quite justified to be the number one chair on so many of these best office chair lists. I'd rather have a leap. I don't think that the leap is a step down at all, even though it's an older model. I would actually take an EMEA for a couple hundred dollars less as a more comfortable chair. I think the gesture gets a little bit of a boost because it does look nicer. It looks more modern with some kind of high back straight edges. So I still really like the chair, but I don't think it quite deserves the number one slot on all these best office chair lists. It's interesting. I don't know why they picked that chair either, but we also know through some of our videos that they don't actually use any of the chairs, so yeah. it shouldn't be <laughs> yeah. that surprising. Which so. may be why it leans a little towards them picking the nicer looking chair. Yeah. So. Interesting. All right, so one quick thing, though. For all the people that are watching around the world that have chairs that we don't have, love to know your opinion on some of the ones that we haven't had an opportunity to try. Are there more overrated chairs on the other side of the world? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching.